Let's break this down now to show how godless immorality is leading us to ruin. We'll do a case study on just one aspect of immorality, sexual promiscuity. As people have cast off moral restraint, people are sleeping around outside of marriage a lot more than they used to. As a result of this, sexually transmitted infections are on the rise. In England alone, they rose by 74% between 1998 and 2009, and similar rises are visible in most Western countries. In the USA, there are 19 million new cases recorded each year. According to findings by the Jubilee Centre, the direct cost of this licentious sexual behaviour to the British National Health Service, funded by the taxpayer, is more than $1 billion per year. In America, the figure is $17 billion per year, and that's just to treat the diseases themselves. Sexual promiscuity, of course, also leads to unwanted pregnancies, and that costs the British NHS £180 million per year. 96% of all abortions are paid for by the NHS. Going still further beyond the initial impact of disease and abortion, which is effectively just murder of unborn children, sexual license causes psychological and emotional damage to those involved, breeds distrust, jealousy and contributes towards the breakdown of relationships and family units. If babies born outside of marriage are not aborted, they are increasingly raised in single parent families, normally by the mothers without fathers. The total cost of such family breakdown to the taxpayer in the UK is estimated to be £42 billion, which represents 6% of public spending for 2011. It equates to £1,400 for every taxpayer in the UK, which is one third of the entire health budget, or about the same as the defence budget or the interest on the national debt. In other words, Britain could wipe out the interest on its national debt if we wiped out sexual promiscuity. Most of the financial cost to the country from family breakdown comes in the payment of tax credits, single parent benefits and in dealing with the health, crime and educational impact. Statistics clearly show that people who grow up in single gender homes are more likely to commit crime, go to jail, themselves perpetuate the problem by having children outside of wedlock, have problems with sexual identity, drop out of school, abuse drugs, join gangs, have relational issues, experience emotional trouble, commit suicide and live in poverty. All of these things then have a knock-on effect on their children and their children and upon society as a whole. The consequences of sin ripple through society, making the whole thing worse than it was before, emotionally, mentally, physically and financially. As people then feel the world around them getting colder and more selfish, they experience more pain and become harder too, putting up barriers and becoming ever more cynical and pessimistic. Sin begets sin and the downward spiral of moral entropy gathers pace. Eventually, moral collapse left unchecked will bring the entire society to complete social and economic ruin. If we tally up the economic cost of sexual license in the UK, taking into account the knock-on effect that ripples throughout society, the figures estimated by the Jubilee Centre to begin at around £100 billion per year. £100 billion is about twice the total cost to the economy of alcohol abuse, smoking and obesity combined, and represents one-ninth of the total UK national debt. In other words, if these estimates are correct and notwithstanding interest rates, by wiping out sexual promiscuity alone, we could save enough money to pay off the entire national debt within a generation. Beyond that, we would have stronger family units, healthier, happier and more balanced children, less social problems, and we would have an extra £100 billion a year to spend on improving transport, education, healthcare, buildings and beautification. And remember, this is just one sin. Very simply, our immorality is spreading chaos, fear and disease and is bankrupting us in the process. Society cannot survive in the long run without God.